Hi everyone, good morning. So you are now watching this video orientation on the subject research and daily life one. So this video is just a quick orientation on what to expect for this subject. Okay, so this video orientation is intended for students of Tomas Kabili National High School, senior high students from grade 11 STEM and ABM. So, I am your teacher in Research in Daily Life 1 or Practical Research 1. I am Miss Jalen Win E. Amba, a Special Science Teacher 1 of Tomas Kabili National High School, located at Tomas Kabili Ligan City. Okay, so for this video orientation, we are going to discuss the following topics. First, let's see what's in store for this subject in Research Daily Life 1 for the second semester of this school year. Next, Let's discuss what is research, its importance, the ethics in research. Next, what that would be what is qualitative research and its types. And next would be finding some research topics. And lastly, that would be finding out learning the parts of a research paper. Okay, so here's the subject overview for research in daily life one. So, for the second semester, first quarter, the duration will be eight weeks. That would be from March 22 to May 17, 2021. So, you'll be graded by the following tasks. First, we have the written works, which comprises 40% of your grades. And these activities will come from the modules. So, some of you had already received the modules, right? And were able to answer already the activities. Okay, the next part would be the performance task, and that would be accomplishing the chapters 1 to 3 research paper draft, and this will be passed on May 14, 2021. Okay? So, I'd just like to uh, remind you that before you proceed in making your chapters 1 to 3 research paper draft, make sure that you are able to send your topics to me first and let me approve it first, okay? So now, we proceed to the second quarter of the second semester. Again, that would be eight weeks starting from May 17 to July 9, 2021. So you'll be graded with the following activities. First, again, written works comprises 40% of your grade and that would be your final research paper. Okay, to be passed on the uh, last uh, part of our semester. And the performance task, again, will be 60%. And that would be the final research presentation. So in the end of the semester, you'll be required to present your researches uh, individually. So tentative dates for this research pres presentations will be from July 5 to 9. So uh, more details about this will be announced in the later part of our semester, okay? So for you to prepare for this um, activity, you may consult uh, or come to me for consultation regarding on your research papers. Okay, so now that you know what you need to accomplish for this semester, let's now proceed to the lecture proper and which will help you in making and starting your own research paper. So first, we start with the definition of research. So what is research? It is a step-by-step -step process of investigation that uses standardized approach to answer questions or solving problems. So basically, its main purpose is to answer a question or to solve an issue. So research is very important in our community because it will serve as a basis why things happen, why things should happen. So, ganyan. So, we also do research to have a progress to develop more advanced solutions, better solutions for the problems we have 
in our communities. So that's the importance of conducting a research. Research is also very timely in this um, time of COVID pandemic, diba? We have this problem of COVID-19. That's why a bunch of scientists are going into research to find a solution in stopping this COVID-19 pandemic. And that is in the search of vaccines. So vaccines are made from or a brainchild of the research of the scientists. Now we proceed to the characteristics of a research. So first, it must be empirical, meaning it is a direct experience or observation of the researcher. Next would be logical. So a research must be uh, done using valid procedures. Next would be analytical. So uh, in gathering the data, uh, there should be analytical procedures. Next would be critical. The researcher must be very careful and have a precise judgment. So next would be method methodical. So again, uh, the researcher must use systematic methods and procedures in conducting the research. And also, a research must be uh, has replicability. Meaning, the research design and procedures are or can be replicated or repeated by other researchers. So, that, uh, these are the following characteristics of a research. So, these characteristics of research just tells us na ang research, dili lang siya pataka, pataka, dili lang ka, naghimu-himu lang ka diya, naghimu-himu ra ka data, nag-analyze, analyze of imuha. So, it must be based on something scientific. So, now we proceed to the research process. So, first step in the research process is defining a research problem. So, in this part, you have to find a research topic to develop a research question. So, why do we call this a research problem? Because, let's go back again to the definition of research. Uh, the main point of conducting a research and that is to solve an issue or a problem. So, now, next step would be reviewing the literature. So, when you find a topic, uh, the next step should be learning more about the topic that you are investigating. Why do we do that? Because we need to find out if there are already topics or studies related to the topic. So that you can now proceed to the next step, which is to formulate the hypothesis. So from your readings on the research papers, on the literature, you can now formulate a hypothesis. So what is a hypothesis? It is a clear statement of what is intended to be investigated. So hypothesis can also be, uh, it's also called a wise guess because uh, it is a wise guess because you come up this conclusion from your readings. And the next step would be uh, um, Making a research design. So, research design is the overall strategy of your research. So, you will have to imagine or make a plan on how you will attack your research paper, how you will do your research paper. So, in this part, it will discuss what type of research design you are going to do what type of research method that you will use, the research in instrument that you will uh, use to gather data, and then what, uh, what method you will use in analyzing your results. So we can see that in our research design. So now that you're you now have the research design. You can now start collecting data. 
analyzing your data, and interpreting and reporting your results. So that's the conclusion of your research paper. Okay, let's have an example. So using the research process, let's start with defining a research problem. So as you view your surroundings, you can see that there are a lot of students who are playing Mobile Legends. Okay, so you wonder, you ask, what could be the effect of playing Mobile Legends to the personality of that player or of that student, specifically in socializing with other people? So that is a research question. So a research question should be specific. Okay? Next thing you need to do is to review the literature or you need to investigate more of the topic. So you research about Mobile Legends and how it affects the players. So ganyan. But in that way, you can now formulate a hypothesis. Because based on your readings, you may, you may uh, read that there is really an effect on the uh, social characteristics of that player. So a hypothesis could be saying that Mobile Legends has an effect on the socializing characteristic of a student. So that is a hypothesis. Next, you now design your research. How will you conduct the research? How will you get the data? How will you analyze the data? And how will you report it in the end? So that's basically the research design, the overall strategy. So after accomplishing those first four parts, you can now proceed in collecting your data, analyze data, and, in, and reporting your data. Okay, so that's how you do this research process. Okay, now we proceed to ethics of research. So ethics generally is considered to deal with beliefs about what is right or wrong, proper or improper, good or bad. So we also have ethics on research to provide guidelines for the responsible conduct of research. So these are the uh, some of the ethical principles when conducting a research. Honesty, of course, because you have to be very honest in reporting data, results, methods and procedures so dili maayo nga gapataka pataka na kagbutang diha ikaw ra himo og data because that is not research when you do that diba next would be objectivity meaning we should avoid have biases on our research paper so especially when again mag analyze ta og data we should not be biased dili kay Tungod kay naa kay ani nga mga principles, you will lead manggod the results to that. I tended singing ana. So, dilit na scientific or dilit na critical thinking imong gigamit diha. So, naa na kay bias sa imo research. Next would be non discrimination. It is important that you should not offend someone uh, based on their sex, gender, and race, ethnic. Et ethnicity, or any other aspect pa sa ilang pagkatabo. So, no? Dili na siya maayo na mag-discriminate ka sa imo research. So, next will be confidentiality. This is very important. So, to have confidentiality on your research. So, um, when you conduct research, di ba, you gather data. This data comes from other people. So, some people na ay mga dili maayo ipang share share sa lain so their responses should be held confidential their identity should not identity should not be exposed just because of your research okay so this goes hand in hand with the principle of carefulness so these are just some of ethical principles and when conducting a research, we are protected by the law RA 8293, which is the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines, so which contains provisions regarding published works and copyright ownership. So if you have works and uh, ownerships na gikawat or gi, gi 
copy sa lain, you will be protected by this law. Okay, so these are some research misconducts. So first is fabrication, meaning make up, making up data or results and recording or reporting them. So this happens when you have very short time na lang and hapit na ang defense. Nya, wala pa kaka-experiment. So this happens. Maghimu-himu na lang kag data. Ang mauni ang nahitabu. Then imu da yung present sa defense. So that is a misconduct. We call it fabrication. Next would be falsification, meaning manipulating research materials or changing or omitting data or results such that the research is not accurately represented in the research record. Okay, so naka-experiment naka ka, naka-record ka data, but it's not going uh, to the way na gusto ni mo mahitabo sa imo research. So, imong gibuhat, nag imong gi-manipulate. Nakagi-delete nga data, nakaiwagi appeal, nakagi-ilis dan. Mauna siya ang falsification. Lastly, is plagiarism. So, the appropriation of another person's ideas, processes, results, or words without giving appropriate credit. So, this is the most common uh, misconduct na ginabuhat sa research. Because usually, uh, we just, we take words from other research papers or sa mga articles and we put it on our research papers without giving them proper credit. Meaning, murakag na ngangkun. Imua daw ng mga words. Pero in fact, dili di ay, kaimura da itong gi-copy-paste sa isa ka-article sa internet. And that is plagiarism. So, be very careful when um, writing your research paper. Make sure to cite. Okay? That is very important. To cite the author of that statement. Okay? Now, we proceed to the two types of research design. First is qualitative and next is quantitative. So, what is the difference between the two? We have here an image. So in image A, as you can see, we have here the researcher. Nagtago sa layo. And he was saying that only 1 in 30 take the free ice cream. Interesting. On the second image, naggawas na siya siya ang gitaguan and he approached the person. He asked the person, what did you feel when you saw the free ice cream? So, he also jot down or recorded the response of the person. Okay. So, which of the two images is qualitative and which is the quantitative research design? Okay. So, let's define the two. So, first, qualitative is a systematic subjective approach used to describe life experiences and give them meaning while quantitative is a formal objective systematic process for obtaining information about the world so it is a method used to describe test relationships and examine cause and effect relationships so furthermore qualitative seeks to explore explain and understand some phenomena so, it answers the question what and why. As for quantitative research, it seeks to confirm a hypothesis about some phenomena. And it answers what and how many. Okay, so as you can see, si qualitative nag, nag mangmuta na siya og unsa, og nga no man to nahitabu. So, pariha sa uh, figure ganina, so, therefore, image B is the qualitative research design and the image A is quantitative research design. Because in image A, iyang nag-count siya, di ba nga? Isara out of 30 ang nikuha og ice cream. So, nag-ask siya how many. It answers the question how many. As for image B, it is qualitative because 
nagsik ang researcher nga numan to nahitabo. Nga numan nga nagkuhag ice cream ang tao. Nga numan nga isara ang nagkuha. So what is the reason behind that phenomena? So that is qualitative research. Okay, so we'll now further discuss what is qualitative research because this is what you need to accomplish at the end of the semester. Research in daily life one is learning how to make a qualitative research. So again, qualitative research is involved in collecting and analyzing non-numerical data such as texts, videos, audios, to understand concepts, opinions, or experiences. So it can be used to gather in-depth insights into a problem or generate new ideas for research. Moreover, this type of research also focuses on the definition, reasons, and concepts. It not only talks about what, but also the why of a social aspect. Now we discuss the six major qualitative research designs. First is the ethnographic research. So in this research, the researcher needs to adapt to the environment and society of the target audience to conduct better research. So the researcher will have a first-hand experience of the natural setting, including the customs, traditions, and culture of the subjects. So this kind of research kai mag Ang researcher mo adto gyud siya sa iyang gusto nga location. Na siya gusto i-observe, i-immerse niya ang iyang self sa culture ato nga lugar. So, that is one qualitative research. Okay, so next kind of research design is the case study. So, it is used to explain an entity in detail. So, it involves a thorough understanding of different types of data sources, including interviews, documents, reports, and observations. So, in a case study, usually you are just looking onto a one or two participants. So, an example of a case study is um, a study of Guang Ming Wang. Uh, his study was... A case study on improving high school students with learning difficulties in mathematics. So, ang iyang kibuhat ani nga study is, he, uh, he invited a student of his na kanang naglisod og math. So, iyang gi-interview, iyang gi-background check, nga no man ingan ni, ang, nga, unsa ang trabaho siya ang mamagpapa, and then kanang unsa yung ginabuhat every day, and then unsa ay yung mga score sa math. And then, he figured out nga unsa ay probable factors nga nung naglisod siya sa math. And then, he also researched on ways how to improve a per the performance of the student. So, first, yes, ang identify ang problem sa students, nga nung gamay ang scores. Next thing he did was Iyang gitry o padako ang performance sa bata by applying the methods na iyang na search on how to improve a performance of a student in math. So, when he did those things, just like gipray sa niya ang bata, iya ang gi kanang encourage in doing more in solving math problems, in ang results niya eventually nakakuha siya results na nag-improve jud ang performance sa bata. So, that is one example of a case study. So, you investigated um, a certain phenomena or a certain situation in detail. So, now, let's proceed to the third uh, research design, which is the grounded theory. So, it deeply looks into the explanation and the main theory behind the event. And it requires the researcher to observe the interviews and documents to build a theory. So, usually starts with a question or collection of data. So, one example is the research paper of a friend of mine in college. So, her research paper was about 
kung unsa ang usually ginaingon sa mga tao nga mag makipag-break through texts or in chats. Ganyan. So, so, what she did first was approach people na naka-experience atong nga situation and then ask them what is, what the, their, kung unsa ang mga messages na ilang nadawat sa mga tawo nga nakipag-break sa ila. So, she gathered a lot of information from a different uh, group of people and then build a theory in the end. So, so based on her results, nakita niya nga na ay pattern ang, ang mga reply or ang mga messages sa mga nakipag-break sa mga, uh, mga tawo. So, Eventually, she built a theory. So, moto ang iya ang result sa iyang research. So, that is grounded theory. Okay, so, for the fourth type of qualitative research design, that would be the phenomenological method. This type is used in their description of an event, phenomenon, and an activity. So, here, the methods used are interv interviews, reading documents, visiting places, and watching videos. Okay, so, so this is one of the most common type of qualitative research design. So, so basically, you are just asking or describing what is the reason why that event happened. So, for example, uh, you want to ask the senior high students why did they choose a certain strand. So, you want to know the factors that affect their choice in picking a strand. So, ganyan. So, you interview the senior high students, what are their reasons, and then basically, in the end, you will, be, you will have a result uh, of the common factors why people choose a certain strand. Okay, next would be the narrative method. So, this kind of research weaves together a sequence of events, usually from just one or two individuals to form a cohesive story. So it uh, involves in-depth interviews, uh, documents, and you should look for themes in those uh, sources. So since narrative man, so na ay narration, so your research in this uh, Aning uh, research kay dapat na siya story. So na kay it's a paragraph gud ang imong makuha nga data from your respondent. So because that entails a lot of um elements, but the way they construct their words and they the way they express their ideas and arrange their thoughts. So that matters in the narrative method na research paper. Lastly, we have the historical method. So it involves the examination of past events to draw conclusions and predictions about the future. So the steps include that in the method are formulating a plan, gathering data, and analyzing the sources of your data. So one example for this is the study of the effects of the historical decisions of the Philippine Supreme Court on Philippine prisons. So meaning you will have to read sources um, about the historical decisions of the Supreme Court that shaped the structure to, of our Philippine prisons today. So ganyan, yung historical method. So now after uh, thinking of a research design, let's proceed to the qualitative research methods. So these are the following methods that you need to incorporate on your research design. So we have the process of, of, of observation. What type of observation are you going to use? Um, what type of record keeping? So is it a case study research? Uh, are you going to use one-on-one -on -one interviews or focus group discussions? Or is it a ethnographic research? So that. So those are the research methods. So this 
will apply to each of those kind of research design. So now we proceed to research problem finding. So uh, first step again is to choose a topic. And since you are all uh, grade 11 STEM and ABM students, you will be tasked to find a topic related on your strand. Why? So that you'll be immersed on the uh, topics that is related on your strand. So you'll be researching about uh, business-related topics, health-related topics, environmental-related topics, science-related topics, and so on. So the following are just some examples of the topics. Okay, so from these topics, you can uh, dig in deeper uh, specific topics from this one, so such as the business ethics. Uh, you can dig in deeper such and look onto the leadership inside a business establishment. Ganyan. Or we have here franchising. So you focus on a specific type of franchise. So for STEM students, you can do the environmental research topics. Uh, we can have the population control. Do you want to study on the awareness of uh, sex education or the use of birth control and other topics such as solid waste management, such as recycling, ganyan, so on and so forth. So there are so many topics you can choose from. So after choosing a topic, next step would be uh, finding out what is your goal or objective of your research paper. So again, that's why I want you to have a specific topic so that your goal will be achievable. So that is important for a research paper. Next is describe a specific setting or location of your research paper. Okay, next step would be looking for data sources. So there are two types of data sources. First is primary data sources. These are information collected and processes directly by the researcher, such as interviews, surveys, and observations. The other one is the secondary data sources, which include information retrieved through pre-existing sources, such as research articles and, and internet or library searches. So next step would be data collection. So for the collection of required information, it is necessary to use some special techniques such as interviews, questionnaires and surveys, observations, documents, and records. So it is important that, uh, so usually the type of data collection will be based on the type of the research design that you will use for your research paper. Okay, so now we discuss the parts of a qualitative research paper. So this should be reflected on the research paper that will pass at the end of the semester. So first and foremost, there should be a research title. So next would be the chapter one, which is the introduction. Uh, this consists of five parts. First is the background of the study, which will explain the information of your topic and what is your research all about? Why did you conduct this research? What is your research problem? Next would be the statement of the problem. Uh, this will uh, discuss the main aim of your or main objective of your study. And this it will also specify the research questions that your research people will answer at the end of the paper. Next would be the scope and li the limitations of the study, which will discuss the uh, so general view of your study and what it should not uh, include. So that will be discussed on this part. Next would be the significance of the study. Um, in this part, you will discuss the uh, specific beneficiaries of the study. What is the importance of your study? Who will benefit it? And how they will how will they benefit in your study? And lastly, that would be the definition of terms. So uh, in this part, there are two types of 
definition uh, terms that would be operational terms and theoretical terms uh, ther or I mean theoretical definition of the terms so only put the terms or the words that will be used in the research paper so so that's it for chapter one Next, we have the chapter 2, Review of Related Literature. So this is the part where you will have to put the research articles, the studies that will support your research paper, and always remember to cite the authors of these articles, okay? And also, only put the necessary articles uh, that will support your research paper. This is the part where students usually have the longest uh, part na naa because para pampagbaga sa paper. Again, it is not necessary na dapat baga si review of related literature as long as you have put the necessary uh, information that will support your research paper, that is enough. Okay? Next chapter would be chapter 3 which will have the research methods. So, under any kay ang mga, unsa ang research design nga imo ang gi, gi gamit, and what research instrument did you use for this uh, paper? And then, we have the chapter 4 and 5, which is the results and discussions and conclusion and recommendations. So, mauna siya ang chapters 1 to 5. And then lastly, we have the references and we can also have the appendices. So, uh, for the first part of the quarter, uh, of the semester rather, in the first quarter, we ha you have to achieve chapters 1 to 3. And then, in the second quarter, you have to accomplish chapters 4 to 5. And then we have the research presentation. Okay? So, um, in our FB group, I'm going to post a sample of a research paper which you can uh, have a reference on. Okay? So, so, again, this is the overview of our subject research in daily life one. So, make sure uh, to jot these deadlines down on your notebook. So be mindful of your deadlines and your requirements for this subject. So I think that's all for this video orientation. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on my FB account, uh, Ma'am Jillian, and on my contact number 0965 You can also contact me, you can reach me through my email address, uh, flashed on your screen. So that's all and thank you for watching. Bye!